Welcome back. In this lecture, we shall discuss distance functions. So the objectives for this lecture deal with distance functions in the context of how they are used to uh, measure distance between samples within a feature space for applications to various forms of machine learning. So the idea of a feature space uh, throughout this course, we've talked about features as dimensions. And we can think of plotting samples based on the vector, the feature vector associated with it in this multidimensional space. And we'll show some visualiz uh, visualizations on that in this talk, such as here. So what we've got here is we've plotted a feature space that consists of two, feature, two features in the feature vector. And this is a classification problem, and we have three classes represented by the yellow, uh, cyan, and uh, purple colored dots. And so, um, you know, clearly we can see that these, uh, you know, these features are pretty good because they're causing our samples to be sort of lumped together based on uh, the right class, which, you know, that's kind of a, a nice thing to have happen. But what we're going to talk about today is, given uh, two points, how do we measure the distance between them in the feature space? And we'll often look at two dimensions, but you'll see that this will generalize to any number of dimensions, because in practice you're often going to have, you know, well over two features. So the intuition is, uh, you know, points that are closer together in the feature space for a classification problem in particular are much more likely to be in the same class. And points that are far away are, are probably going to be in different classes. And this intuition carries through a lot of different approaches in machine learning. How we define, you know, whether something is close or far, um, that's not important for this particular lecture because how something is determined to be close or far, that's made by the algorithm that uses the distance function. Uh, in this talk, we're just going to talk about the distance function itself because you'll see many of the machine learning approaches will assume that, hey, we're given a distance function, and this will give you an idea of what that is and what properties it should have. So here are uh, two feature vectors, x and x prime. And probably the most common way to compute distance is what's called Euclidean distance. And in this two-dimensional space, uh, what we're doing is we're just um, using Pythagorean's theorem, essentially, because you have those two points and the difference between them on the x and y axis, uh, squaring those differences, and then finding the square root of the sum. But, of course, we want to generalize this. We want to be able to use this for more than just two features. So how does this look like if you have an arbitrary number of features? So if you have m features and you want to use Euclidean distance, you're still using Pythagorean theorem. You're just summing up more than two dimensions here. You're still finding the square of the difference, and you're still taking the square root of the whole thing. But this can be generalized further in something called the Minkowski distance. Now here we have a parameter p, which set to 2 gives you uh, the Euclidean distance. But p is both the exponent applied to each difference between points, as well as specifies the root that you're taking of the overall sum. So there's some uh, very common cases of the Minkowski difference. So first is p equals 1 is called the Manhattan distance. And here we're just taking the sum of the absolute value of the difference between two points. It's called Manhattan distance because it can be thought of in a grid looking at all the x and y movements it takes to get from one point to another, and that's the idea you know, the kind of the intuition is it's like a taxi cab driving through Manhattan. And this is a small correction here. This should be p equals 2 for Euclidean distance. Uh, 
um, but that's the one we've already covered. And then p equals infinity will actually limit as p goes to infinity uh, is called the Chebyshev distance. And what this is essentially looking at is the maximum uh, difference between uh, between or the maximum distance between the two points out of any of the features. So a distance function is also called a metric and mathematically it can be just looked at as a function that takes in two scalars or two vectors rather and returns a scalar. Now it's often useful to uh, define a distance function in terms of axioms because in this way if you're designing a new, new machine learning approach and you want to have the flexibility to change out the distance function sort of like a hyperparameter uh, you want to make sure that the distance function adheres to certain axioms and maybe you're dealing with some very special domain and you're using something like k nearest neighbor or k means clustering that really is dependent on that distance function. Well, if you're designing your own customized function and that's, you know, you won't need to do that for every single application, but every now and then it might be a smart thing to do. Uh, what property should that function adhere to? Well, there's three axioms of distance functions that are really quite important um, to adhere to. The first is identity. The distance between anything and itself should be zero. And this is just intuitively makes a whole lot of sense. The second is symmetry. So uh, distance between vectors x and y should equal the distance between vectors y and x. And then the third is what is called the triangle inequality, which means that the distance between x and z in this case is the shortest path. So any, so there's no way it could take some detour point between the two and come up with a shorter distance. So anyway, that summarizes this introduction to distance function. Uh, stay tuned for more content.